So in this experiment, you're going to begin with a test tube with cyclohexane. This will be our solvent. The solvent cyclohexane by itself has a freezing point of about 6.4 degrees. That's from our textbook. And we will add to that solvent some solute. Now this is your unknown, and your task in this lab is to figure out the molecular formula of this unknown. So this white crystalline solid will be our solute. Now the minute you add the solute to the solvent, you get a solution, but also other things happen to this new solution as well. The very minute you put in the solute, these are known as colligative properties because whether you add a whole bunch or one little speck or independent, whether the compound is ionic or covalent, glucose or salt or potassium hydroxide or urea, all these four colligative properties will emerge. So as an example, the freezing point will actually be lower than 6.4 degrees the minute you add a solute to the solvent. So I highlighted this in red because this is the colligative property that you will be studying. The new solution has a boiling point that's much larger. Uh, the new vapor pressure is going to be lower because now you have to overcome solute, 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 solvent, and solvent, solvent interaction. So more intermolecular forces must be overcome. And finally, the fourth colligative property is that you generate an osmotic pressure in the presence of a semi-permeable membrane. So if there's a membrane in there, the solvent will actually rush to neutralize the solute. So in this experiment, the equation that you'll be utilizing is this change in the freezing point. So you know the freezing point is going to be lower than 6.4 degrees. So that difference is going to equal to the uh, constant, the freezing point depression constant. For cyclohexane, the solvent by itself, it's 20.5 degrees C over lowercase m. Lowercase m is known as molality. So very important to recognize that molality is not the same as molarity. Molality, lowercase m, is mole of solute, in this case the unknown, whose formula you're trying to solve, divided by the kilogram of solvent, how much solvent you put in. So another important uh, thing that you will need for this lab is the units of molar mass. It's going to be grams over moles. So you will weigh out two mixtures. One uh, mixture you'll put in 0.06 grams of the unknown. And then the second one you'll add an additional 0.03 grams, so a total of 0.09 grams. But the units are going to be grams per mole. We will get the molecular weight of the unknown utilizing this equation right here. And then finally, it's important to recognize that a solution is equal to a solute plus solvent. You will not get any of these four colligative properties um, unless you add a solute to the solvent. So here's my data and results that we've obtained. Um, yours is going to be different, so it doesn't matter. That's okay. Basically, what I've done is I've um, taken this data table <clears throat> um, and uh, for my data and results, and I've put it in this Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. So the important thing here is you're going to weigh out the liquid uh, of cyclohexane, your solvent, and you're going to weigh by difference on the weigh scale. You will have to convert that to kilograms because um, molality is moles of solute of our unknown divided by kilograms of solvent. And then we weigh out 0.06 grams for our first mixture, and then our second mixture is 0.03 grams, the total is 0.09 grams. So the freezing point, um, this is textbook value of pure cyclohexane is 6.4 degrees. We got about 5.1 degrees for the freezing point of mixture one. I just want to uh, tell you based on my experience, um, this uh, freezing point, this bend or kink, uh, may be a little bit difficult to ascertain. So try your best to look at the diagram uh, or your graph uh, of the data that you collect. And you, you want to look for some sort of inflection point or some sort of kink or bend. And that would be an approximation of your freezing point. Now, if you read the lab protocol, they actually have two methods. One, you could just read it straight off from the graph. Just be forewarned that, um, based on my experience, um, your graph may or may not look exactly like this. So extrapolating this freezing point may take a little bit, not a lot, a little bit of effort. Or you could do the second method that's actually uh, shown here um, on page four of your lab handout. So once we got our uh, freezing point, we can move on to the results section. So 
uh, we got our freezing point depression. We took 6.4 minus 5.1 degrees for mixture one. And in mixture two, when we added an additional 0.03 grams to the test tube for a total of 0.09 grams, we got a freezing point of 2.3 degrees. That is 6.4 minus 4.1 degrees. So let's figure out the molality here. So for mixture one, the change in our freezing point, 1.3 degrees, so 6.4 minus 5.1, 1.3 degrees. And K of F, um, that's given to us in the lab manual, is for cyclohexane alone, 20.5 degrees C divided by lowercase m. Doing that calculation, I'm getting a molality, lowercase m, of about 0 0.0634. And it's very important that you know your units here. It's mole of solute over kilogram of solvent. So so we got our molality that we calculated here. That's our first part of our um, data analysis and filling out our table in our results section. Uh, the next question in our data table is moles of the unknown that are added. So the moles of, that are, of our unknown that are added is going to be calculated using this stoichiom stoichiometry. So this is our amount of solvent we weighed out times the molality we calculated from above, notice the kilograms and kilograms cancel. An uh, answer of about 0. .0003379 of solute, which is our unknown. Now the molar mass of the unknown, um, now that tells us the experimental one or the empirical formula is C3H2Cl. This experimental is what we are looking at, what we get from our data. So your data may be a little bit different, but if I'm getting 0.000379 moles, uh, we weighed out in mixture 1.06 grams. So to get the molar mass of the unknown, remember our units are grams over moles. I'm going to take uh, the grams that I weighed out, that's 0.06 grams, and I'm going to divide it by the moles of the unknown added that I just calculated, and I will get about 158.331 grams per mole. Now the empirical mass of the unknown, C3H2Cl, um, that is straight from our periodic table. So from our periodic table, 73.49 grams per mole. So remember the empirical mass of the unknown is what you calculated from the periodic table. And um, the mass of the unknown experimentally is what we calculated from our results above. And again, your results may differ from ours. So remember from GenChem 1, to get the experimental you, uh, molecular formula, you will take the molar mass of your experimental, and you will divide it by the empirical mass. This gives us our factor. So the factor is about 2. So we will take our empirical formula and multiply it by 2, and our molecular formula now is going to be written down here, C6, 2 times 3, H4, 2 times 2, times 2 CLs. So multiplying this 2 throughout will give us the experimental molecular formulas. The accepted one, uh, let's just use our periodic table values. So that's going to be 6 times 12 for carbon, 4 times 1 for hydrogen, 2 times about 35 for chlorine. I'm getting a value of about... So remember your formula for percent error, it's going to be the experimental value. I usually like to take the absolute value of this, but some people do, some people don't. It's really personal preference. But the formula for percent error is going to be, and I'm going to just do this in Excel to save some time. It's going to be your experimental minus your accepted divided by your accepted, and we multiply that by 100. So uh, to get it into a percent, uh, but it's around 7.7% .7 error. Okay, we're going to go through the exact same process for mixture two. So let's go ahead and do that very quickly. For mixture two, we got a change in temperature of about 2.3 degrees. The new freezing point will be 2.3 degrees. Uh, just like the new freezing point for mixture one will be 1.3 degrees. <clears throat> so for mixture two, the one where we had um, a total of 0.09 grams added together, um, we got uh, a new freezing point of 2.3 degrees. We'll divide it by the constant. Uh, 2.3 divided by 20.5. Don't forget your degree C's and degree C's cancel. Getting about a value of about 0.112, lowercase m. 
But let's go ahead and calculate the moles of our solute for mixture two, realizing we weighed out this many kilograms of cyclohexane solvent. We just calculated the molality from our new freezing point above. So this uh, multiplication gives me a value of about 0 0.00630670. Uh, it's going to be moles of solute. Molar mass of our experimental C3H2Cl, our empirical formula, will stay the same. So now in order to calculate the molar mass of our unknown, whose uh, empirical formula is here, uh, we're going to take 0.09 grams and divide it by this many amount of moles. So let's go ahead and do that and get our answer. So I'm going to just go ahead and do that on Excel itself because mixture 2 has 0.09 grams grams divided by moles and I'm getting about 134.328 grams per mole. That's the molecular weight of mixture two. We know the empirical mass of this formula is about 74.39 grams per mole. So just as before, we're going to take the ratio to get our factor N between the uh, molar mass experimental and the empirical formula mass. So this ratio here is about 1.8. So let's multiply that factor of 1.8 to our empirical formula. So 1.8 times 3 for 3 carbons is about 5.4. I'll just go ahead and make it 5. 1.8 times 2 for our hydrogens is about 3.6. So um, maybe I'll round that up to 4. And then 1.8 times the Cl L1, about 2, I'm sorry. So I'll round that 1.8 up to 2 for the Cl. So our new um, molecular formula for mixture 2, the one that has 0.09 grams, is going to be C5, multiplying 1.8 throughout. Um, C5, H, I'm going to round here, 4, and then Cl rounding up, I'll make that 2. Let's go ahead and if this accepted molar mass is C6H4Cl2, let's just go ahead and calculate um, its molar mass from the periodic table, which is about 147 grams or so. So in mixture 2, um, 147 grams is the accepted. Um, the experimental, we got 134. Relative to C6H4Cl2, if that is indeed our correct formula, um, we can uh, figure out our percent error. So our percent error is going to be as before. Let me remind you of that equation. It's going to be the um, accepted minus the experimental divided by the accepted. So I usually take the uh, absolute value and I multiply, obviously, because it's a percent error, you multiply your final number by uh, 100. It's about 8.62%. So an 8.62% error in mixture 2, 7.7% error in mixture 1, um, assuming that the formula has the correct form. Uh, molecular formula of C6H4Cl2. So let's go ahead now and look at some of these post-lab questions. This one is asking, what will the effect be on the calculated molar mass uh, in part A if some of the cyclohexane evaporated uh, while the freezing point of cyclohexane was being measured? So if some of the cyclohexane was evaporated uh, while your freezing point was being measured. Um, let's go back and look at the formula here for molality. Um, it's moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. Now, in this question, you're saying some of your solvent evaporated. So if some of your solvent evaporated, then this denominator is going to be low. And if this denominator is going to be low because some of the solvent has evaporated, this whole fraction is going to be high which means your molality will be high. Now, molality is moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. Let's just forget about the kilograms of solvent. Uh, but if this overall value is going to be high, that also means this numerator of moles of solute will be high relative to the solvent because, remember, it's evaporated. So if the moles of solute is going to be high, then our formula for the molecular weight or molar mass is grams per mole. Well, if the moles of solute are unknown, is going to be high. That means that this overall ratio of grams per mole is going to be low. So the answer to part A is uh, if some of the cyclohexane evaporates, uh, the molecular weight is actually going to be low. Part B, some of the cyclohexane evaporated after the solute was added. This is the same situation as before. We 
can calculate the molar mass of the solute. Um, if some of the cyclohexane evaporates, same reasoning as in part A, molality is going to go high. The moles of solute will go high. Grams per mole, um, the denominator number of moles will go high. The overall fraction will be low. So same reasoning as in part A. Foreign solute was already present in the cyclohexane. Well, if a solute was present in the cyclohexane, that's not going to have any effect on the molar mass uh, because, uh, number one, the foreign solute will appear in all your measurements. So mixture one, mixture two, mixture three, as you continually add more and more solute, uh, the foreign solute just stays there, gets diluted. Uh, so the effect here is nothing. So really here, the error is just propagates. Um, it just continues as you add more and more of the unknown. The temperature probe was incalibrated correctly. Looking at part D, it gives a temperature of 1.5 degrees too low at all temperatures. So along the same lines as in part C, this is an error that gets reproduced from as you continually add more and more solute to the solvent. This error just propagates. So whatever your molar mass will be, uh, it will still be the same because the error just is the same from as you continually add more solute to the solvent. So if the error is found in all subsequent measurements, it should have no effect on your calculated molar mass.